So as part of my uh, series on relay logic, I want to demonstrate to you um, the construction of a um, edge-triggered D-type flip-flop. Um, and this is actually a quite a complicated circuit that I designed a couple of years ago. And it's um, very useful because you can build synchronous counter chains and things like this out of it. Um, so follow this. Um, what it basically contains three relays, and the first one um, is a set relay, and there's also a reset relay. Set and reset. Um, and then these both um, have a common clock line, and this clock line is connected to positive. So what's going to happen is when this clock button or contact is connected, then um, it will allow both of those to get power, to be potentially energized. So they also have um, contacts which hold them on if they happen to be on already. So um, we also have to have a diode in here, which I'll explain later. So this diode um, and these contacts, if that happens to be on, then it's going to hold in the S relay. So that's going to keep that one on. And then the circuit is uh, symmetrical, so we uh, also have a similar arrangement for the R reset relay. So now, um, having done that, now we need an input. So the input comes from um, a set of contacts, which uh, is the D input, the data input. Um, and then we have two lines coming off here, one to indicate that we are clearing and the other one to indicate we are setting um, the flip-flop. Now the point about this circuit that's important is that we actually don't we actually want um, the state of the D input to only be affecting the, re the relay flip-flop at the very instant that the clock gets pressed and then like a millisecond or so later we want the circuit to be ignoring the, um, this, this, this uh, this input. So that means it can change. Um, that allows you to build counters and things like this. So you don't want to have any race conditions and it's quite tricky to achieve this with relays. Um, so part of the way that we actually do this um, is that we have a separate set of contacts on here and on here. And so when we actually want to set the set relay, um, this set input actually has to go through um, the contacts on the R relay first, and only if that one happens to be off um, is it allowed to come in and set the set relay, like this. And also, the same is done in a symmetrical way with the clear input. If, this happen if the clear happens to be grounded, and if the set relay is off, only then can we take the power through to the R relay. So what's going to happen is at the moment the clock goes gets connected, then only one of S and R will actually energize, and then it will disconnect um, the other input, and it will simultaneously hold itself on, so then the D input can change in an arbitrary way and it doesn't matter. So now what we need is an output relay as well. So the, the output relay over here is the Q relay. Um, and what we want to do here is have it hold itself on um, if it is on. And um, I'm going to use a diode here to hold that on. And then also um, we need um, a connection from this to the uh, set relay. So I'm going to use this contact on the set relay. Um, and put another diode in here. So if that happens to be connected, then it's going to connect this point here. So it's going to allow the, the one side of the Q relay to be grounded, so potentially it's going to set it. So we need to also do something to reset it. Now the problem is the circuit needs to be completely um, symmetric in order to avoid any race conditions. So we've got some signal here uh, which we need to have coming out here which is through another diode. Now that's got to reset this relay. Well, how are we going to do that? It's a little tricky because, uh, well, you can't really easily use contacts on the relays to achieve this. So the way that we actually do this 
um, is that we have uh, the other side of the relay um, going to positive but through a resistor um, and then we can connect this point to here and so if the relay is on already um, because this contact is closed, this diode is energized, the current is going through the resistor, through the relay to ground, um, then having the reset relay pull in will, will short that resistor to ground, so that causes this um, relay to drop out. Um, the resistor has to be small enough to allow um, the relay to be energized through the resistor dr voltage drop on this diode. Um, but not so small as to cause like too much heating or whatever. So this is the basic circuit, and then we can have um, this as an output. This is the Q output, and then effectively this is the Q bar output, and then we can string on a bunch of other contacts on there. So in order to make this just a little bit uh, more effective, if you're going to string a bunch of these um, circuits together, um, is we can actually stick some diodes in here, um, and these diodes act as isolation diodes, so now um, the, any changes in this circuit aren't going to kind of find their way back into whatever contacts we're using over there. So now um, it's possible to effectively make this D um, contacts on this, um, the Q contacts on some other flip-flop circuit, or um, even these, Q, these ones. So if I actually uh, were to connect these to these, but like swap them over, then I would actually, and every time I, the clock was uh, pressed, then that would actually uh, do a divide by two. So it would switch on and then switch off and switch on and switch off by feeding uh, the Q to the D, but like uh, inverted. So it's also possible to have an asynchronous set and reset in here as well. Uh, and the way you would do that is by having. Um, just a switch to, to take this to ground that will set the relay um, just by effectively giving it ground uh, to short it and then it will close and then it will hold itself on and then the way that you would actually reset, reset it is by breaking this connection here so you'd have uh, say a push button here with a, which was a break push button so that it would disconnect that line if you wanted to reset so that would be reset and that would be an asynchronous reset. Of course, when you apply the power in the first place, it will already be reset. So that um, altogether is the development of the edge-triggered uh, D-type flip-flop.